first. Clay Thompson came home last night and, by the way, was pretty darn solid. 22 points, hit six three pointers in this game. Clay actually, with his arguably his best game of the season, he had been shooting in between opening night for Dallas, in which he scored the exact same amount of points he did last night, 22. In between that, that stretch between the second game and the game before last night, he was shooting something like 30% from three point range. So Clay was not playing well by any stretch of the imagination. And Clay steps into his old stomping grounds. Obviously, there's the the tribute to Clay before the game with the tip and the the captain hat, which I thought was a great touch. Shout out to Joe Lakeup and the entire Warriors organization and ownership. Just it's a first class franchise that does first class things for first class uh, athletes, which Clay Thompson obviously was for so so long in in the Bay Area. And so I, I thought the tribute they it was a ten out of ten, and, and Clay Thompson certainly uh, appreciated that. The staffers, the fans, it was great. As far as the game itself, shout out to Clay for playing well. But if there's one thing we know about the Golden State Warriors, listen, I, I, I'm not going to sit up here and say, oh, clearly the best team in the NBA. Uh, thus far, that appears to be Cleveland, as much as that pains me to say as a guy who hates all Cleveland sports. Uh, the Cavs, uh, they haven't lost, and they've dominated basically all of their games thus far at this point in the season. So, uh, you know, kudos to Cleveland. I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give it where it's due. But deeper than that, for all the depth the Warriors have, and they've got it, the great coach and Steve Kerr, what I thought last night was a validation of is something that I've said, and this is not to take a shot at Clay Thompson when he just played his first game at Golden State as a visiting player, but this franchise is anchored by two men, primarily. There's obviously Steve Kerr. You have the GM and the, the ownership. It's two men. It's obviously Steph Curry, and it's Draymond Green. Let's start with Draymond briefly. Draymond Green was re Ridiculous, per usual. Yeah, I hear off about how uh, Draymond Green, I, how many times have I heard the last three to five years, oh, the Warriors should move on from Draymond. It's like, I don't know. He's one of the five best defensive players on the planet. Uh, he's got a DPOY. He's got four titles, and the Warriors may not have two, three, maybe even any of them without his contributions. I don't know. Call me crazy. The Warriors are like way better with him on the floor. And Draymond Green last night, uh, in terms of the defensive end, uh, had two blocks in this game. One was a block on a three-pointer in which he saved and bounced. I think it was DeAnthony Melton who made a layup on the other end. And one came late with about two minutes to go. Daniel Gaffer, the big for the Dallas Mavericks, going up for a dunk. And Draymond says, get that out of here. Palms it at the rim. And and really helps Golden State in that late, that late game run, which we'll get into in just a moment. But if you look at, if you look what Draymond you know, contributed, he was great per usual. And then he got that bad dude. As I always say, Steph Curry, he's 36 years old. He'll be 37 come March. He may not be the best player in the league anymore, uh, but I can still say he's the best American player. Respect to guys like LeBron and Tatum and Anthony Edwards and Anthony Davis. Steph Curry's still the man. But even if he ain't the best player anymore, even if that's Jokic or Giannis or other guys like that, there is one thing that we know for certain without any shadow of a doubt, is that is Wardell, Stephen Curry the second is still... The baddest man in the game of basketball, and he showed you why with the dagger shot last night. This is the call from the great Kevin Harlan on TNT of Steph's dagger. Thompson will defend Curry. A screen by Green, the switch to Lively. Three, Curry. Oh! Steph was fired up. You see what he did. This is a great graphic Alfred put together. This is what Steph Curry did in the final three minutes, 10 seconds of the game. 12 points, perfect from the field, four for four. Perfect from the three-point line, two for two. Perfect from the free throw line, two for two as well. With some MVP trance, of course, as a little, a little cherry on top. One night night, which happens to be the uh, the 14th of his career. We can actually show you just a, a quick little a compilation, 14 seconds of, of 14 night nights uh, for one Steph Curry. And we did this, of course, in chronological order just to be historically accurate to what this man has done constantly and, and terrorized teams of the course really since that celebration was a venue see that was the one in the olympics against france it was a beautiful thing to watch the whole country was rooting for steph at that point which was which was incredible but steph is a guy he's averaged 27 minutes tw just 27 minutes over the first 10 games this year steph missed a few of them due to injury but steph on average 27 minutes per game last night 35 minutes played. So this was obviously, and Draymond talked about on his podcast with Baron Davis, the Draymond Green Show, which is a great podcast. Uh, he said that, you know, Steph was going to talk to the fans, give a speech to the fans prior to the game, hit up Clay Thompson the night before, and according to Draymond, Clay ghosted him. Clay didn't respond back. 
And so Seb's like, okay, listen, that's still my brother. I love him. Splash Brothers for life. But I'm going to make him pay. Remember, there's a moment, second quarter, for those that didn't see it. Clay hits a three, does a little shimmy, a little Steph Curry shimmy. Steph is over there. He's about to check in the game. He's at the scorer's table, just kind of grinning, like, I'm going to get this guy. I'm, I'm going to get this guy. And, of course, he did late in that basketball game. Is that when you look at a Warriors team, which is across the board, top five in basically everything, we could show you the numbers right here. They're one of the two or three best teams in basketball, at least to start the year. Second in offensive rating, second in points per game, second in rebounds per game, although I thought size was a problem. Interesting, second in rebounds. Uh, third in assists per game, fifth in defensive rating, third in net rating, second best record in the NBA now, much to my chagrin. They're second in basically all those categories or third uh, to the Cleveland Cavaliers who are you know off to a pretty incredible start. But... What I've said about this Warriors team coming this year was pretty simple. I don't know if they'll be a contender. I was a little skeptical. I just knew they were better than last year. And I knew it was good that they moved off of Clay Thompson. So Clay, reportedly the Warriors did want him back. We talked about this during the offseason on the show, but at a reduced price. And we know, again, Draymond, you know, I don't know, Dr no, sorry, Brian Windhorst, not Draymond, Brian Windhorst talked about on ESPN late last night, early this morning, talking about how, and, and I've, I've reported this from sources I, I'm you know, aware of in the Bay Area, that there was a sense of, Clay was almost distant from the team. The last two years, certainly last year, there's an anecdote against the Clippers. We don't have to get into specifics because I don't want to, you know, make Clay look bad. But there was an instance at the end of the game with the Clippers. Clay makes a post game or a late game mistake. It was, you know, it doesn't dap up Steph when Steph wants to dap. But like it's, it's, it kind of boiled over, and then Clay gets put to the bench. Then Clay gets back back to the starting lineup. It was just kind of a mess. Warriors wanted to back at a reduced price. Clay's like, ah. Uh, there's a team that just made the finals. They want me to be a starter, and they want to pay me more money. I think I'm going to go there, which I don't fault Clay for. Matter of fact, I encourage it. God, listen, you're at the late stage of your career. Clay Thompson is in is in year 14. You go get your money when you get your money. I advise that to any athletes, any athlete, because think about being an athlete. It's not like being a lawyer or a doctor or a teacher. There's a very limited, you know, space. There's a very limited window for you to achieve you know, everything that you want to in your athletic career. Now, we know what guys can do post-career and whatnot, but you got to get your money when you get your money. So I don't fault Clay Thompson for that. But last night to me was the validation. While Clay's important and Clay was critical to that dynasty, if you had to do a hierarchy in Golden State in terms of the, who, who, who was most uh, responsible, who's most valu valuable to those four titles, Steph's obviously at the top. Nobody's going to argue that. I against Draymond Green after that, I'd probably say Kerr. Clay, then Bob Myers. Because you want to get Bob Myers credit, he got Kevin Durant there. Then he probably said KD, then Iguodala. You go down the list from there. But as great as, sorry, as, as good as Clay still is, as productive as he still is, the Warriors were going to be fine without him. As a matter of fact, Buddy Heald across the board statistically, coming off the bench, mind you, has been an objectively better than player than Clay. Better shooting percentage, more points per game, plus minus, in less minutes, by the way. Then one Clay Thompson come off the bench, which again, Buddy healed big time spark in the second half of the Warriors. Buddy gave you 14 on six for 13 shooting. Had an off night from three, but that's going to happen. He's a, he's a shooter. That's going to happen. So listen, I, I don't know if this Warriors team is a full blown, no question contender as currently constructed. What I do know is this you got that guy leading the show. You got the baddest man on the planet, one of the six greatest players ever. Knock, not, not only knocking the door, but just banging the door of one of the five greatest players ever. Uh, I, I think Steph's a title away from in, indisputably passing Magic Johnson in terms of longevity, changing the game. Steph can just do things that Magic and, frankly, most guys that have ever played the sport can do. Um, so, I, listen, I, as long as you got Steph in his prime, which he still is, you're good. As long as you got Draymond at the end of his prime, you're good. Steve Kerr, good. I still wouldn't mind. I don't know if this is sustainable over the course of a season. Certainly playing 11 to 12 guys isn't. But I wouldn't mind if they were to, to, to sub in some of those guys for a more impact player. For a guy where if Steph doesn't have it going like he did in the last three minutes of last night, which Steph, listen, more times than not, Steph's going to come up clutch. Crying out loud, he won clutch player of the year and saved America's bacon against Serbia and then against France in the Olympics. He more times than not obviously comes through. But when he doesn't, who can you rely on? I love Jonathan Kaminga. He's not quite there yet, but he heals the man. Kind of a spot-up shooter, can score off the dribble, but not terribly consistently. You're going to need to get that other guy. And I think, again, there's a dude in Milwaukee who's playing for a really terrible basketball team, a really old basketball team, a poorly coached basketball team. You know, 
Just saying, maybe you know, strap on some draft picks. You might be able to land them. I'm not saying, but I am saying. So, listen, great win for the Warriors, a validation of Steph and Draymond, and a validation of the front office for saying, you know, because I, the, one of the narratives was, oh, you got to be loyal to Clay. You got to be loyal to winning first. And the reality is Steph Curry gives – listen, Steph Curry is different because he's been there from the jump, obviously. Steph was, was the building block that started the process of the Warriors dynasty. We know this. But Steph can still help you win. Matter of fact, Steph can be the guy to lead you to to bigger and better things come playoff time. You got to be loyal to that. You got to be loyal to winning first, loyalty second. So, I mean, if Clay was still the old Clay, uh, he'd still be a warrior today, I think. Matter of fact, I think he would have signed an extension well before 2024 free agency, but that's how it played out. Wishing Clay, obviously, nothing but the best in Dallas. Don't want him to beat the Warriors ever, but a validation of Steph, Draymond, uh, and the Warriors front office. And shh, let me tell you something right now. That babyface assassin. Woo! There's special things in the basketball's hands. I know that for sure. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.